exposed nigerians hmm, you need to be aware you need to be aware of visa Niger of visa nigerian government because what apparently yaya belu has been has been granted a soft landing but the where the miscommunication came in was that the ESCC boss himself did not know about this promised soft landing Apparently, Ududu had spoken with some high-ranking officials, political officials, government officials in Abuja concerning how they are going to give Yaya Bello a soft landing, you know, and he's going to return some of the funds he has stolen, and then he will be let loose. But it was a shock to him and Yaya Bello to find out that even the boss of EFCC does not know about this arrangement, which now caused, you know, the whole brohaha bro <laughs> bro that happened um, in the media just a few days ago. You guys, hmm, our federal government, they just keep deceiving us. If ordinary man steals one million naira, he would get punished for it. He will go to prison for fraud. But if a big man steals one billion, I mean billion, one billion naira, they will just say, okay, how much are you willing to return? Okay, return like 200 million and we are going to let you go free of charge. That is in Nigeria, my country. But imagine the United States of America, someone who was the president of, of a country, Trump, Donald Trump was interrogated, he ha his house was raided, he almost went to prison. I'm even shocked he's not in prison right now. And <laughs> he, the United States would never waver when it comes to accountability, when it comes to justice. He would have gone to prison if they found anything incriminating in his possession. But in Nigeria, yeah, it's all about who do you know? Who knows who? What connections do you have? It is your connection that will get you out of trouble when you enter trouble in Nigeria. That's just the way it goes. But without wasting any much of your time, let's delve into the details of today's news. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, by the way, please subscribe, like this video as well. What was supposed to be a soft landing deal for Yaya Bello, immediate past pre uh, governor of Kogi State, to end this protracted face-off with the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, went aweary at the car park of the anti-graft agency on Wednesday morning. Usman Ododo, his successor, had negotiated a soft landing deal for Belo with some senior officials of the Tinubu administration, under which the former governor would return some state funds trades to him in exchange for a plea bargain, insiders told the cable. The cable could not confirm the full terms of the negotiation, but the anti-graft agency was still expected to charge Bello to court regardless, even if for lesser offenses. Armed with that, it thought, armed with what it thought was a sealed deal, Ododo brought Bello from Lokoja, the Kogi state capital, where he had been in hiding for months, to Abuja on Tuesday and accompanied him to the EFCC headquarters on Wednesday. Ododo used his status as a sitting governor to gain entrance into the EFCC premises without formality. Following which, he announced that Bello has come to honor. The invitation the commission sent to him after he left office in January 2024. Ordinarily, this was supposed to end the saga, which had seen Nigerian authorities issue a red notice to Interpol after the former governor was declared wanted. As it turned out, Olaolu Kayode, the EFCC chairman, does not appear to be in on the deal. When Ododo reached Michael Unzikwe, chief of staff to the EFCC chairman, on the phone to announce the arrival of Bello, he told the governor his boss was not around as the commission was not aware they were coming. Insiders told the cable that Unzikwe asked them to leave, 
promising to get back to them as soon as the coast was clear. By, the, by this time, Ohiari Michael Bello's head had issued a press statement announcing that his principal had honored the EFCC invitation. Insiders in both camps told the cable different versions of what happened next. According to Bello's associates, the entourage had spent four hours within the EFCC premises before Inzikwe told them to leave and return when the chairman would be in the office. They contend that the chairman did not need to personally receive Bello, as the EFCC has institutional processes to handle those invited for interrogation. You declare the man wanted and he voluntarily submitted himself only for you to turn him back, one of Bello's associates told the cable. That would suggest that there was something personal about the whole investigation. If you felt too many people came with Bello, all you needed to do was ask for only Bello and his lawyers to be allowed to enter the office. The EFCC was not happy he came voluntarily. They would prefer to arrest and uncover him for a media show. That was why they came back at night to the Kogi Governor's Lounge in Asokoro and started shooting. Belu has always believed somebody wants him dead and the shooting confirms his suspicion they could have killed him. Protocol breached. Inside EFCC, the version of events is slightly different. After Bello's entourage left, EFCC issued a statement clarifying that Bello was not in its custody, with reports curiously emerging online that the former governor was actually arrested the previous night by the commission. The reports turned out not to be true. First, there are processes for taking in suspects and interrogating them. There are established protocols. None of this was followed. What the governor tried to do was employ intimidation by using his immunity status to railroad the EFCC into acting his script and insider told the cable. When Ododo saw that we were not falling for it, he started shouting that they would not leave the EFCC premises. Nobody invited Ododo to the EFCC. It was only Belo that was invited. By intimidating our officials, Ododo thought he could have his way. He probably wanted to be in the interrogation room with his benefactor. The thinking in EFCC, as insiders told the cable, was that only Bello and his lawyers should be allowed in to avoid interference by Ododo, and that was why they were asked to leave, although Lukayode was indeed not in the office. They were asked to return with the unspoken instruction that only Bello and his lawyers would gain entrance and they would have they would have to go through the protocol of filling forms and dropping their phones, among others. The EFCC hierarchy appeared reeled by the viral image taken of Ododo and Bello arriving EFCC headquarters as photography is strictly prohibited within its premises. Well, then who fired the first shot? Olukayode eventually came to the office and sent his chief of staff to invite Bello back to the commission since he appeared to be no longer on the run. Ezekwe went to the Kogi Governor's Lodge late afternoon to deliver his principal's message. What happened next is again narrated differently by both sides. On Thursday morning, Bello's media office said EFCC operatives came the previous night to forcefully take away the former governor, blocking the road and firing shots. EFCC's officials said rather that it was Ododo's security team that started firing gunshots into the air 
on seeing the commission's vehicle. EFCC operatives responded in kind, and EFCC insider told the cable. While all this was going on, Bello slipped out of the lodge and exited Abuja, leaving the EFCC empty-handed. In essence, the big fish that presented himself on a platter to the EFCC early Wednesday morning and was torn back has now disappeared into the ocean, temporarily off the oak. For now, Nigerians will have to be cautious about the saga, swallowing every tail line. Who can sink her is one thing they should be advised to avoid. So in Nigeria, once you see something on the media, make sure you do your due diligence. Make sure you investigate, check the newspapers, even go online. And then from there, you draw, you draw your own conclusions of what had actually happened. Because I was surprised, I was shocked on Wednesday when we were just seeing contradicting news. The FCC saying one thing and then Bellows Media Aid are saying another thing. But in my own opinion, I feel that if... Um, Usman Ododo has used his immunity to breach the uh, protocol at the EFCC. They should have called his attention. They should have said, okay, this is the protocol and you have, you have breached those protocols. You haven't done what you're supposed to do. So we are going to lead you back to the entrance to do what you ought to have done when you were coming in before we can begin the interrogation. Instead of just turning them back and say that the uh, the 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 EFCC chairman is not around, so come back on a later date. I think that is where you know that is that that that's that sounds quite serious because seeing that an institution such as the EFCC would have a normal protocol that they follow when they have invited somebody for an interrogation and the person has shown up. That's even though the chairman is not around, you know, there are people that should, you know, put them through all of these protocols and make sure that things are done appropriately. And then the ESCC was they said that uh, they knew that Ododo would want to come into the interrogation room with Yahaya Bello, which they did not want to. They should have just said that and then there was a mention of unspoken rule. They sent them back based on an unspoken rule that they would come back and follow the protocols and then uh, the interrogation will be done. The rule shouldn't be unspoken. It's not everybody that knows about the rule. If somebody is coming to your office for the first time, that person probably did not know about the the processes, how you do things, whether they should drop phones, whether they should not take pictures or anything. They're, first of all, there are even security officials that are supposed to be, you know, at, at at the headquarters to tell them that, oh, no taking of pictures. This is how we do things. He did this, this and that. But, you know, this is Nigeria. You all, let me have your thoughts in the comment section. What do you all think about this? And who do you think uh, shot, uh, took, shot the first fire? <laughs> Was it uh, the, from Ododo's side? Yeah, yeah, below side, or was it from EFCC side? Because both parties are saying that uh, it is the other person that shot the first uh, uh, gunshot. What do you think actually happened? You all, thank you very much for always watching and listening. I will see you in my next video. Bye for now.